OK, let's okay. get started. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our Asian Cloud Community Meetup. Uh, we are part of the bigger Asian Cloud Community. And in case you don't know, we are on Facebook. We are on Meetup. We also have a YouTube channel. And if you'd like to conduct a session yourself or you would like us to address any topic in the upcoming Meetup, you can contact any one of us who are the organizers, myself, Saktis, Asif, Senthamil, or Rigud. Uh, in the past, we have done so many sessions and all these sessions, they are recorded as part of the Azure Singapore sessions and they are published on YouTube. So you can go and uh, visit our YouTube channel. And here are some of the recent sessions that we did, uh, starting with Azure Baston, which was our previous one. Then we also had adding video and audio communications to the applications by Mayur Tendulkar. We had .NET MAUI and also building DevOps culture so the topics are wide and varied. We don't restrict ourselves to only one topic. Uh, we are quite open in terms of the uh, Azure's area of space and anything related to Azure. We are more than happy to talk about it. So today we have an uh, interesting session about running mission critical applications in Azure. We have Alejandro Carvalho, who is a principal cloud solutions architect in Microsoft, joining us all the way from Australia. Uh, Leandro is a uh, accomplished author. He has written multiple books on Windows Server 2016, 2012. He is also recognized as a Microsoft MVP from 2010 to 2016. So it's always good to have someone who has a community background coming and presenting at our meetups. Uh, Leandro is also a certified ethical hacker, so uh, looks like he likes to wear a lot of hats at a time, and I'm looking forward to this session. But before we talk about today's session, there are some things uh, which we would like to uh, know the audience. So in terms of related sessions, we also did some other sessions in this meetup in the past, like how to become a certified Kubernetes developer or administrator, how to improve observability and monitoring using OSS tools, how to use past services, and how to use or how to build distributed cloud native applications. Again, uh, go ahead and watch this on our YouTube channel. If you don't know where we are, you can scan this QR code and that will help you to subscribe to the channel. Before I hand it over to Leandro, these are some of the reminders. Uh, please keep yourself on mute when the session is on. If you have any questions, you can use the raise hand feature or you can put it in the chat. You can also unmute during the Q&A session. This session is being recorded. And if you like this session, please help us to spread a word about our community on the social media. Thanks for joining us once again and over to you, Leandro. All right, thank you for the introduction, for the nice introduction. I will just share my PowerPoint now. And welcome everyone. Uh, hopefully you will learn a thing or two today. And what we're going to talk about is mission critical applications in Azure. Today is actually Azure 13th birthday. So um, yeah. it's a good timing here. And the idea for this session is pretty much to walk you through some of the insights about what a mission critical application is and how we can incorporate some of the framework and recommendations to make sure your application is always available, always reliable, secure, and you reduce the impact of productions, uh, production environment. And that's a concern, especially today in the cloud, where most of our applications are complex, they are quite massive and they are crucial, they are critical, right? We want to make sure that the application is always on and we want to reduce the time that the application is going to be unavailable. And that's why we are here. So for those who don't know, um, after the nice introduction, I'm a cloud solution architect. I live in Canberra, Australia. I'm actually uh, originally from Sao Paulo in Brazil, and I have been living in Australia for the last 12 years now. My specialties are Azure infrastructure and a little bit of mission critical as well. So I have been working at Microsoft for the last six years in the support for mission critical team. And we have here some customers in the region, uh, the APAC region, and when I'm not working outside of work, I love sports, especially as a Brazilian soccer. Uh, 
I practice a martial art from Brazil called capoeira. I also love tennis and ski. We do have ski um, resorts close by here in Canberra, two hours away. So uh, that's where I spend most of my winter. And when I'm not doing that, I'm normally reading something about history, astronomy and philosophy. So I'm very active on LinkedIn. If you want to keep in touch, you can uh, use the QR code in the PowerPoint, or you can also search my LinkedIn um, nickname, which is Leandro ESC. All right. So um, what we are going to do is I will go through the agenda for today, but I'm going to make this session very participatory. So if you have any question, feel free to um, ask in the group chat. Feel free to raise your hand and you can uh, also open the microphone as well. So please do let me know if you have any questions. OK. With that of, out of the way, let's just move into the content that we have today. So the agenda is pretty much to go straight into the introduction and the overview of what Mission Critical is, why uh, we have Mission Critical and how we can deploy a su successful mission critical application following the best practices in Azure. Then we talk about the design methodology and the principles and design areas in detail. And a I have a little bit of a demo at the end of the presentation and some links and some content that I wanted to share with you as well. OK. So I wanted to start by talking about uh, the problem statement that originated mission critical in the beginning. So designing a reliable application at scale is complex. It requires extensive platform knowledge to select the right technology and um, optimally configure them to deliver the end to end functionality. And when you do that, failure is inevitable. It's a matter of when, not a matter of if. The more complex and the bigger the application, the more uh, prone to failure the application is going to be, right? And when you think about the complexity and the number of options you have today, it's quite. Um, we don't have, we didn't have a way to specify and to recommend a better way to deploy solutions in the cloud. And to show you an example, I'm not sure if you have seen this screenshot here, but it talks about uh, it's a workflow helping you to select the correct uh, compute solution in Azure. So if you start at the top, you have some questions that will help you to identify what kind of uh, access and service that you want. And based on your answers, we can give you a option. But as you can see here on the far right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different options only for compute. So this is a very good example of how complex things could be. And when you put them all together in our architecture, the failures and the uh, problems you might have with that application, it's very um, common, right? And Internally at Microsoft, there is a project that used to be called Always On, and that was the project that initiated internally by the CAT team, C-A-T. They are the legends behind pretty much everything I'm going to present to you today here. And they are the ones who created the mission critical um, framework and all the insights and the templates and the links and the training that I'm going to be sharing with you today as well. And the term mission critical, by the way, which is quite important, refers to a criticality scale that covers significant financial costs, which is business critical or human cost safety critical associated with the unavail unavailability or a application performing pretty bad. So if you have any application that have some financial cost when they go down, that could be classified as a mission critical, right? Financially or human cost. And we do have customers here in APAC, government agencies, uh, e-commerce uh, customers. We have 
health agencies as well, where mission critical should always be available. And when they are down, lives are put at risk. And that's why we want to make sure that the application is catered for failure. OK, and the idea for the presentation today, and that's my goal for you today, is to show you the mission critical approach. So Microsoft created a set of guidelines and architecture patterns that will guide you to create, design, architecture, and even test and play with a mission critical application. We have a reference implementation that is going to help you to understand how we translate some of the documentation requirements that might be a little bit too high level from a, an architectural perspective into technical terms. So you will see here at the end of this presentation how you can deploy your mission critical application using the standards that are in, that we are uh, proposing. And that's pretty much all the guidance and all the insights that we have so that you can grab that documentation, that repository, you can understand what you need to do to deploy your application in a safely manner, being mission critical. What are the design areas that you need to uh, focus on during the design architecture and the deployment, best practices, recommendations, and the templates as well. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is taking you into a journey with a um, the design methodology that we have for Mission Critical, okay? So before I continue, any questions so far? Is that clear? No questions? I'm just looking at the group chat. If you don't have any question, by the way, you can just give me a thumbs up. So if you're clicking React, just give me a thumbs up there. Uh, thank you. I can see some thumbs up coming up. All right, cool. So yeah, feel free to interrupt me and ask any question as we go, okay? Nice, all right. So the first part of the journey that I'm talking about is the design methodology first step, which is the design for business requirements. This is where, as an initial exercise, we advise customers to select a target reliability tier by determining how much downtime time is acceptable. And this is what we call an SLO, service level objective. And you can see here an example of the three nines, the four nines, and the five nines. On the, left, on the right side, you can also see here based on which tier, how much downtime is permitted based on that SLO. But most importantly is how that SLA is going to impact your solution, your architecture. So in this image you are seeing in the center, we show you that a uh, tree nine might be um, deployed in one or two different regions. When you go to four nine, you have two different regions and extra services. And with five nine, you might have three different regions and a bunch of other uh, solutions and applications that we are going to be covering today. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you how to deploy a solution that is uh, the 3.9, and you can add a new regional stamp that can go all the way to 4.9 and even 5 if necessary. So you can actually deploy the whole thing from scratch using pipelines, fully automated, very easy, so you can see the whole thing actually being deployed in Azure. Okay, so that's the first step to. Look at those reliability tier, and we have an exercise with the customer asking them which one of those are acceptable. Which, uh, what, what's your business acceptability based on the availability SLO? That goes into more details, including recovery time objective, recovery point objective, RTO, RPO. But this image will give you a sense of what we are trying to get with that conversation. Based on that, and that's quite important, right? Because everything we're going to deploy, we'll need to adhere, we'll need to follow the SLO that we have um, identified. So that's quite crucial. And that's why this is the first step in that conversation. So after we've got that in place, 
we move to the second part of the conversation, which is the um, design principles and the design area. So now that, now that we have the SLO, we talk about first the design principles. Everything that we do as part of the uh, mission critical application deployment has the five design principles in the mission critical. For those who are familiar with the well architected framework, they're pretty much the same, um, but they are a little bit more aligned with the mission critical uh, methodology. So you have things like maximum reliability, which is the most important one being a mission critical application. You also have performance as well and scalability as another pillar. Operations by design, which is quite in interesting because there is a, a kind of um, paradigm where operations from an application perspective is something that only happens after the application has been deployed and goes into BAU, right? What we do here is we take operations from the design and architectural perspective all the way down to development and to operations uh, by cloud operations team and whoever is going to be managing that team. So that is part of the conversation. So when we are talking about operating or visualizing, troubleshooting the application, that is designed from the top to the bottom. Obviously, cloud native design when possible and always secure is the last um, column there. The pillars that we use for the design um, areas. All right, so these are the five key design principles and all the uh, other components that I'm going to talk to you today are based on these five pillars. Now, going more into the mission critical design areas, we have what we call the design areas per se, right? And the design areas consists of eight design uh, specific uh, design areas, and they represent all the architecturally significant topics which must be discussed and designed for when defining a target uh, mission critical application architecture. They are actually interrelated and decisions made within one of these areas can be mostly and will have impact or at least influence decision across the entire design. And what we do here is that the you have the considerations as part of the design areas, you have the recommendations and the design decisions. So if you go through each one of them, starting with application design all the way to deployment and testing, we, we give you the guidelines of what the design areas are, what the recommendations are from a Microsoft perspective, what we have learned from our customers, the mission critical customers, and what are the design decisions you should be aware of, right? All of them, as I mentioned in the beginning, are part of the well architected framework. So in this session, I will be talking closer, um, um, we'll take a closer look on application design, which is the first one. We are going to be talking about the health modeling, which is this one here, and also the deployment and testing, all right? But I will, I will show you a little bit of the other ones in our documentations and how some of the questions and considerations we have for each one of them, right? So the first one, which is uh, one of my favorite, is the application design. The application design, and many customers we have seen so far, started the mission critical journey to have an urgent need to scale out a solution within the same or across multiple regions, right? So the question number one is, I want to be able to scale my application so we can handle the client connectivities and the workload that I need. And for many reasons, this can be capacity handling, more requests per second, and geographical coverage, for example, as well. And what we see in reality is that most solutions are not prepared for that. So that's what the customers want, but what they accomplish is quite different, right? And they came back to us saying, how would you do it? 
how Microsoft would do it. If you had to deploy a, a, an application that is mission critical, how would you do it? So these are the eight areas we are covering today, and the application design has four subtopics, global distribution, scale unit architecture, loose coupled event-driven architecture, and application level resiliency, uh, patterns and error handling as well. So let's talk about the first one, which is global distribution. In this image, we have a high level active active design based on the reference implementation that we have that I will show you at the end. When a user is actually accessing an application through a central global endpoint that is spread across uh, globally in the regions that we will need access to, and it redirects the traffic to this suitable regional deployment stamp. So as you can see here, each region has a copy of the whole solution and they are running as an active, active uh, design and connectivity, which means if you lose one of them, the other regions can take 100% of the load. It doesn't matter which one you go to, but that's what I maybe a three or four nine would look like, all right? with two regions when you add the third region we are going to the four five nines and beyond and what we are using here from an azure perspective is that the the entry point the central global entry point here is azure front door and then we also have cosmos db as the database which can be distributed across different regions and you have um, multi regions right read and write so that would be perfectly aligned with the global infrastructure. And we also have container, um, Azure Container Registry as well. And for each one of the stamps, we call these stamps, uh, which are units where you deploy the whole application. Each one of them would be deployed in their own uh, specific region. All right. So this is the first one, the, uh, the global distribution of some of the layers of the application and the local deployment of the application stamp. The next one is the scale unit architecture. So I gave a little bit of background on that. And scale unit is pretty much um, deployment stamp with the, um, the whole solution being part of one single logical or um, a, a unit per se. What that gives you are things like blue-green deployments. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but with the blue-green deployments, you have your production environment running in Australia East, for example, which is your blue deployment. And then you have your green deployment, which is the new version of your application. And they are um, running parallel. However, this one is in production, right? And the other one is just in standby. Before this one goes online, we have the whole solution running in parallel, but only the production is receiving act action, um, sorry, uh, user connections. So let's say this one here is the active, and my, which is the blue deployment, and ECUS is my green deployment, right? So all users are going to that uh, particular region, what we do is we deploy the whole thing, we test everything, we make sure everything is working. And when I say test, it's a full test, including UI tests, coding tests, uh, stress tests, load tests. We want to make sure that the application is ready to um, go into production by breaking the application before it actually goes into production. And I'm going to show you some really cool uh, examples there. Once that passes all the tests, we make that application, uh, that unit active by receiving 10% of the traffic, right? So we redirect 10% of the traffic, see how that's behaving, how that's going. And if that's all good, if we do, if we can do some other tests as well, we can go up to 20 or 30%, right? And then the same thing again, Make sure everything's okay. If we have any issues, we can roll back at any time. 
And if everything is going well, we keep going to 50, 75, and 100%. After this one is with 100% of capacity of capabilities receiving the user connections, um, what we will do is we'll leave that running for a while just to make sure everything is okay because um, the other stamp is still there. And if everything is good to go, if we are happy with that stamp, we can just decommission the other one, right? So these are some of the benefits that you get with a scale unit architecture. That will give you the uh, proper up from testing and a bunch of other capabilities that I will be discussing later on. So that's the um, second part of the application design, right? So taking that into consideration, the other part that's quite interesting that I love talking about is the monitoring. And I like to start this conversation by showing you and actually asking you a question. Let's see who can guess this one. With a health modeling um, example of a normal dashboard. So here in the center, you can see what a normal dashboard uh, looks like. And the question I wanted to ask you is, what is wrong with that dashboard, right? So when you look at it, what does it tell you? So for example, this one at the bottom, right, is going up. You've got a spark there. So is that okay? Is that something you need to be concerned about? And this one going up and down here, what does that mean? So after working on the solution, you might be aware of how that works and what that means, but going up in that example might be just the number of requests we're getting. So the more the merrier, that's great. But we want to change the mentality of, of how we monitor mission critical workloads. Because what happens today is, as you can see, the operator must interpret the metrics to determine what is going on, what is the problem. So it's looking at metrics to find out what is the problem and most importantly, where it is the problem. And you, you ask the two follow-up questions, right? Where is the problem and what's the impact? With the health modeling we propose in the mission critical approach, we change that by having those two questions answered first and then you do the troubleshooting after but when you answer those questions you know what the impact is what is the user impact and where the problem is okay so if something goes wrong you know where the problem is and the problem with the existing dashboards they look really good but they are, should be based on health status and not metrics. Health status is based on what we call the traffic light approach. So as you can see here in the PowerPoint, you have a traffic light for user flow and parts of your solution where if everything is okay, it's green. If it's green, it's keen. Everything's looking great. If something is out of normal based on the baseline, we might need to have a look. And if something goes really bad, we know the user impact and where that problem is, right? So this is based on user flow and you have a traffic light dashboard. Let me show you how that looks like. This would be an example of that dashboard. So as you can see here at the top, you have your application, the website, and in here we have three user flows. One user flow to add comment in the uh, website, one user flow to list the catalog items, and there's another user flow to show static content, like an e-commerce website, right? The next one is the services that are providing the capabilities to the user flow. So you have the background processor and the catalog service. And at the bottom, that's where we have the resources. So you have things here like checkpoint storage, cluster, key vault, and the blob storage, right? I know for a fact that if something goes wrong here with the cluster, my comment user flow will get impacted 
as well as my list catalog items will get impacted. So if the cluster goes yellow, everything on top, everything that depends on the user uh, on that service, that resource will go yellow as well. So it's very it's very easy for you to identify where the problem is and what's the impact. All right. So we give you the templates, we give you even the code so you can create this, which is pretty cool. And I will show you later on. But before I show you some examples, I wanted to explain the how, how we get that kind of information. There are two um, Azure native solutions that we use to have the data from two different sources, the application code, which is as, um, as we can see in the PowerPoint, uses application insight. So that's where we have the app telemetry from your code itself. And we also have the Azure monitor logs where we get the metrics from the services, from the platform um, in Azure, right? So with those two data sources, we come up with something that we call a health baseline. And this is an example of what a baseline looks like. I know for a fact that if my event processor U depth is below 10, that's good. If it goes to 50, that's uh, something that we need to be aware of. It might be a concern. It requires some attention. And if it goes beyond 50, that is going to generate a user impact. All right, so we have I, um, AI ops which will help you to create these kind of um, baselines with Azure Monitor and Log Analytics and Application Insights. But this is just a, a very quick example. Have a look at this um, AKS cluster metrics. So if the average CPU is below 75%, that's all good. If it's below 90%, then it might be something uh, between 70, uh, 75 to 90. That might be a problem, and if it goes over 90, that is a problem, all right? So this is a very simple table that we use as a reference in our documentation that will give you that kind of insight. And what I wanted to do here is show you a quick video of how that's going to look like. So bear with me, I will just start the video, and um, I just want to make sure you can also listen to the video. So what I would do is I will start the video, I'll pause right at the beginning to make sure you can hear it. Um, otherwise, I will be able to just explain what the video is trying to present. So let's give it that a go. Here we go. Let me pause there. Were you able to hear the video? Yes, we can hear yeah? it. Yes. All right, cool. Let me go back to the beginning. It's a very short video, but I love the uh, representations and the examples in this video. So let's try that again.
All right. I love the representations in the video, and that's the one I wanted to show you in more detail. So this is an example of an application on the left where the cluster is at 70% alt scale capacity. So I know where the problem is, and I know what's the impact straight away, right? If you go back to the old dashboard, you can see the metrics, but it doesn't tell you much. You have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. You have to identify what is the problem. And here we change that um, idea of having those very important questions answered in the beginning and giving you the right direction so you can find the problem quickly and you can understand the impact straight away. On the right side, you have a, here a problem where the background processor queue has more than 100 messages. And I can see right away that the problem is in the background processor and everything else that's impacted in my website. So if users try to add a comment um, in my website, that is not going to work. All right, so these are just PowerPoint images, but I've got a screenshot here of what that would look like. This is a Grafana, Azure Graf Managed Grafana dashboard. And you can see on the right, there is also an example where there is a very high latency of your uh, storage. And that storage is causing some problems that's impacting my user flow here on the right as well. Okay, so that's what um, the health modeling approach for a mission critical application looks like. And I guess that it's not even for mission critical. I love this approach of having this traffic light approach where you can clearly see where the problem is. Has anyone seen this before? Have you, what, what, what's your feedback? What, what's your take about the health modeling? Does that make sense? Did you have any comments or any feedback? Anyone wants to share something? You can come off mute or you can write something in the group chat. Would you implement that for your applications? Did you like the idea of looking at the dashboard and finding out when something's wrong? A little bit quicker than normal. And what do you have today? Do you have anything similar or is that the first time you're hearing about it? I think for me it's the first time, but uh, I really like uh, the idea of the health modeling, how we can. And uh, yeah, but I was curious, like how you decide in terms of services and, uh, you know, in terms of uh, like architecture, how, how exactly the modeling works. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's a good question, Mohamed. What, what we do is we look at the whole solution from uh, an architectural level. So it would have a diagram with the dependency mapping. You know how every user flow, uh, all the user flows you've got in the application, how um, each one of them uh, flow down to the services that will be providing that user flow and down to the bottom, what are the services responsible for that user flow and the dependencies between them. So we do have a um, dependency mapping activity where we try to have that visibility. And after that, it's very easy. The only thing you have to do is get the baseline of what is normal, what is acceptable for your application to be running. And we translate that into the metrics in the previous slide that I showed you. And from that particular metrics, which is this one here, the health state definition, from that, you just create the dashboard that I showed you that will change the color based on these entries here. And we do have um, in our documentation some help around the design considerations, recommendations that you need to be aware to design this, and even the code to create something exactly like this. Not only the code, but um, you will be able to deploy your own application with this particular dashboard as well. Does that answer your question? Mohamed. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I think in the last slide uh, you have mentioned uh, from the code you will generate, uh, you know, the, from application telemetry, uh, this health modeling so solution, the services. So I uh, mean, like, I was curious how exactly, uh, you know, this model will be generated from the uh, logs and uh, telemetry, you know. 
and oh, okay. uh, then we can assign the yeah. Um, so what we use for this particular pain place here for this um, dashboard was um, Azure Manage Grafana. So we, Grafana is getting the logs from Azure Monitor and App Insights. And those metrics we were talking about, you create a KQL query, for example, to classify each of the metrics and you have a representation using Grafana or something else to create the uh, dashboard itself. Thanks. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, thanks for the question. Now, I wanted to ask uh, everyone the next topic we're going to talk about. But before that, what is the most common causes of application outages? In your experience, what what is the top one cause that make applications go down. Do you have any uh, any feedback, any thoughts to share? What are the most common things that you do or that happens that brings an application down? Anyone, do you have any experience like applications you've got that went down and why they went down? What, what's the common issue that happens there? No proper monitoring. Yeah, uh, time to respond Number might be requests. a problem. Number of requests we are getting. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, number of requests, depending uh, on how your application scale, you might have some issues to respond for that capacity, right? Those are very common um, ways for you to break the application, but one of the top ones are failed deployments, changes that went wrong. And yeah, that's, this. you know, it's like the application is great. Everything's working, but we deployed a change that broke the whole thing. It was such a small change, but we didn't know that small issue, that tick box would generate a cascade um, issue that reminds me of that, um, the chaos, What's the name? Um, the chaos, the th theory. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but it's when a butterfly can generate a tornado across um, the planet. So one single cause can have an effect that is massive elsewhere. So that's the. I forgot the name. If anyone remember, do let me know. But it, there's actually a nice movie that talks about it. The butterfly effect. So that's the actual term for the butterfly effect. And that's quite often, right? Because cloud, we need to be able to change rapidly, to apply, uh, to deploy, and to release the application and infrastructure as quick as possible. And for that reason, failed, uh, failures are going to happen. So what um, the approach to deployment and testing plays a critical role in the overall reliability of a mission critical application. Deployment and testing, which is one of the design areas, should form the basis for all the application and infrastructure operations to ensure that the consistent outcomes for the mission critical workloads are in place, right? So in this example here, we have different things I will break down with you. The first ones in green are the global resources. So this is where you have front door, Cosmos DB. They are deployed globally, and they are the ones providing services to each of the stamps. So let's say you have a stamp here in Australia and a one, another one here in Singapore. Both of them are using Cosmos DB as a database. So Cosmos DB is the global resource. You also have Azure AD at the top here as a identity provider. You have your monitoring uh, resource group with some uh, resources to monitor your solution from a global perspective. And you also have here each of the regional steps. So this is where your application is. You have one in Australia, one in Asia. 
both of them can support up to 100% of the traffic and they are um, providing services in an active, active deployment. And the front door um, at the top here will send the traffic to the respective um, region based on, for example, where the user is located, right? So you have things like AKS, you have the storage, you have Event Hub, Key Vault, and you also have a stem for monitoring. Now, why do you have monitoring within the stem and a monitoring for a global resource? Well, the global resource monitoring obviously will be monitoring the global, uh, also the, the, all the global resources here, as well as the stamp to make sure that we know which stamp is up and down. So it's like a, a backup in case of that monitoring is not working correctly. Kenneth, um, I can see you have your hands up. Did you have uh, any question there? <clears throat> No, if it, if it's okay, Leandro, I, I just wanted to uh, maybe the, I know this is just an example, but but when we talk about democratizing um, and splitting up, um, I would say creating landing zones, et cetera, et cetera. Would you consider in this example also from a um, criticality perspective to uh, do some segregation between global and regional resources into separate subscriptions? managing, yeah. you know, our bag and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's a good point. So it depends on the size of the application, right? If the subscription, a single subscription, which is the one I'm showing you here, is not enough. It doesn't support or it doesn't provide the level of services and limitations that you require for the application. You can definitely break that down so that each region has its own subscription and that's all based on the landing zones um, approach as well so mm. yeah you can definitely do that we do have examples in our repository for both scenarios a single subscription deployment and what we call a connected uh, subscription deployment as well mm. okay thank you nice good question thanks for that and the other thing we've got here which is my favorite part is the supporting services. So as you can see, we have KO Studio, we have load testing, security center, and a bunch of other services to uh, support everything that's going to be used and deployed in this particular scenario. One of the things we were talking about, uh, failed deployments and the most common issues that we have in production is the releases and some other problems you might have when you're deploying when something goes wrong, right? And the approach we are taking here is when you're deploying the solution, you're deploying the whole thing. You're deploying the whole stamp and any other global resource that might be deployed as well. But remember, we were doing that in a parallel, in a blue-green approach. So production is still here, it's blue. And your green uh, deployment, which is what you're deploying parallel, that's going to be tested. And what we propose here in this approach is that we test everything. Before we even get one single user connection, we have unit tests, we have smoke tests, you have user interface testing, we have load stress performance testing, load generator, for user simulation and even failure injection using KO Studio. And I love that because you're actually breaking the application to see how the application is going to behave and how they will gradually um, automatically fix itself and before you actually put in production. And when you do that in a single approach, you have a holistic view and a centralized testing a centralized approach to deploy everything. And you know for us for sure that everything you could have done to test application has been done. I saw a hands going a hand going up. I think that was uh, Jabir. Sorry, um I was just finishing my comment. Did you have a question there? All right. Uh, if you had a question, just let me know. Okay. I'll keep going here. And 
when I mention the testings we are doing, these are in our template. Remember, we have a, a two scenarios, two applications that you can deploy today, right now, and both of them, we do all these tests, and I, I will show you in a second. Now, um, another point that's quite interesting to discuss is the changes and how we deploy these changes. To make sure we have consistency and we are 100% sure that we have a confidence that the solution is up and running and has been tested and stressed um, holistically, we want to deploy all these changes in just one go. And when I mean changes, I mean infrastructure changes as well as application changes, which means whatever you're going to change in the application, you deploy as a single thing. Everything is redeployed pretty much. Why? Because as you can see here, we have the consistency. Always using the latest version of both, no mixing of versions side by side, and also testing everything holistically and in just one go. And you also have the reliability because you don't have any configuration drift from manual changes. Everything is replaced every single time and for every single change, you have the whole thing tested from scratch. We do need to mention some of the downsides. And the first one here, I think is the most important one is the fact that to accomplish that, you, you need a blue-green approach, blue-green deployment. So you're deploying the whole thing parallel until you change the traffic and move everything to this new uh, green deployment you're still paying for both of them. So it might be a cost impl implication there. Um, and you also have the longer release process. Depending on how big the application is, it might take a couple of um, hours for the whole thing to be deployed. And if you consider that for small changes, that could be a challenge, but this is a change of paradigm. It's a change of uh, how we think about deploying things in the cloud. And because it's cloud, it has to be fast, it has to be well tested, and it has to be, uh, you have to be confident with what you're deploying, right? So I've been talking about all these beautiful uh, design areas and what you have to do, but I wanted to show you what you how you do it. And this is the reference that we had uh, that I wanted to show you which is the step number three in the methodology to deploy your first critical application. We have what we call an end-to-end -end deployment application, which is something you can deploy from scratch using pipelines. You just need an Azure DevOps um, tenant as well as a Azure subscription. And we have, uh, the, the CAD team has created this and they have done a lot of testing. They have deployed this in a lot of different regions and the full deployment takes around 50 minutes. You can also, after the deployment, you can do the chaos testing, the load testing, all the testings that I was covering in my previous slide. You can add a new region in that deployment, and you can see how the traffic flows and you have the cool over to the new uh, blue-green deployment. And that will give you the hands-on lab, right? I'm a kinesthetic person. I like to put my hands on and to do it myself. And this is going to give you that kind of scenario. How you translate, which is something that people get confused. You're giving me all these guidelines, all these recommendations, architectural design recommendations. How does that translate to a real wor world application? What we have to do to see that in real life? And that's what the end-to-end -end application is doing. So if we go back to that um, architectural reference that I was showing you before, where you have the global uh, resources at the top, and then each of the regions are a separate unit, this is what we are actually deploying. So we have a GitHub repository where you can copy. That's where we have all the pipelines. They are all public. You have all the codes. By the way, everything is using Terraform, which is great. We know that a lot of customers are using Terraform out there. 
you can see the pipelines, you can copy them. And that's what we use to first deploy the global resources. And then we deploy the regions for the application. You just need to specify what is the um, deployment uh, details. And then once you do it, you can see the application up and running in 15 minutes. All right. So all the source code, the pipelines, everything is available for you. You can copy and paste. You can use that as a reference. That will give you a really good starting point for you to kick off your uh, mission critical application. So for demos, for you to show how a mission critical should behave, to see the dashboards, everything that I was talking about, this is a really good uh, example. So the way we do it is we have the whole uh, global infrastructure deployed uh, from scratch or any changes. Then we deploy the new release units, each of these, each of the stem for each of the regions. We test them, we redirect the traffic, and then we remove the old units. So this is what it looks like from a very specific process. You have the global infrastructure, you have some testing, and have a look at the this one here. When the solution is deployed, we um, send 10% of the traffic to the new stamp. Then if everything's okay after the gate here, we send 30%, 75%, and 100%. After we send 100%, we disable the old stamp. We live there for a while, and then we destroy it, the old one. All of that is done automatically. No user intervention, nothing for you to worry about. And this is what it looks like from a DevOps perspective. All right, so let me show you um, in my demo environment here. So first of all, I just wanted to show you the repository in the documentation that I was talking about. This is the mission critical uh, well architected framework documentation. This is where we talk about the design methodology the ones that I'm talking about right now. So if you remember in the beginning of the presentation, we talked about design for business requirement. What's your SLA? What is um, acceptable? What is the downtime acceptable for your application? So that's the table I showed you in, an, in, in that particular animation, right? Then the second part is evaluate the design areas. The, eight design areas that I briefly talk about in my example. Then give it a go, see how we do it, see how we actually deploy a mission critical application. This is the step number three, deploy your first mission critical application. Step number four is the integration with the low, uh, Azure load uh, landing zones. And what we do here as well, by the way, is that we give you the two scenarios that I was talking to you, uh, Kenneth, the first scenario is when you have a single subscription and you can also have a separate subscription and a separate connectivity deployment as well. All of that is actually aligned with the landing zone um, approach. And the last one is, yeah, deploy a sandbox application environment, All right? So if you go down here to the design areas, all the design areas that I was talking to you about, they are very well explained, like what is a scale unit? Why we recommend a scale unit? What are the design considerations you have to be aware of? What are the design recommendations that you should be uh, looking for? So it's a very step-by-step -step detail for each of those particular topics we were covering. If we go back here to uh, health modeling, we explain everything that was in my PowerPoint. The health modeling approach using the um, the metrics. So the, and have a look. This is the KQL code. So you can copy and paste. You can do that, and you can take that as an as an example for your template. And this is uh, the template, the dashboard that I showed you. There is actually a 10-minute video done by the CAT team with a, a full example of that, which is really cool. So as you can see, my presentation is based on this documentation, it's all there. And what I wanted to show you is 
two really cool things. The first one is the assessment tool. So if you have a critical application running today, we have a well-architected assessment for mission critical workloads. You can take the assessment and we will give you guidelines based on all these uh, principles and methodologies and design areas. We will compare what you've got and we'll give you really good insights and recommendations on how you can improve your application to get where we want you to be. So that's a free assessment and it's pretty, uh, I will send you the links in a second. And the second part is the um, the template, the, the code that I mentioned, where you can apply, the, deploy the whole thing from scratch, which is uh, this one here. We have two examples, Mission Creek Online, with this, which is a single deployment within a single um, con uh, uh, subscription and a single connectivity. And you have Connected, which is decoupled with a hub and spoke topology, a separate network connectivity. And it's really cool when you have shared services within the application, right? So if you click in the Mission Creek Online, this is actually, oh, let's do that actually, let's open that in a separate window. This is um, the whole thing here deployed from scratch. So this is what we will deploy. And you have here the getting started guide. If you click here, we show you everything you have to do, like create a DevOps organization and project, which is free, by the way. Generate your own repository from this GitHub template. This is actually the template. This GitHub uh, has a template. You have to import a deployment pipeline. And you have to do some other stuff in here. But then once you run the pipeline, this is what you're going to get. This is the pipeline. So have a look at the bottom here. You have the global infrastructure being deployed. We test the application beforehand to make sure everything is okay. We do deploy the release unit. We deploy the configuration. We actually deploy a workload with simple data. So it's actually a website, workable website uh, that sells clothing. And look at this bit here. We test the endpoints. We do the whole redirection, 10, 25, 50, 75, 100. We test the global endpoint, and that's it. All of that has been done automatically. So if I go here to one of my applications um, and I run a pipeline, this is what a pipeline looks like. Oh, sorry. Let me run an existing one. So have a look. It's very simple. I don't want to destroy everything at the end. I want to deploy everything from scratch. This is the one that's going to take around 15 minutes. And I'm deploying the end-to-end, -end, the main branch. Just run it, come back after 50 minutes, the whole thing is going to be deployed. If you want, you can also run chaos testing and load testing after the deployment. So it will give you some really real tests showing you um, some capabilities after the application is deployed. But have a look at the pipelines here. We have a bunch of pipelines. You can deploy a, you have deployment here. Let me see if I can see that easy. Grafana, the, the Grafana stuff, the uh, dashboards. You can also deploy a unit instead of deploying the whole thing. You can deploy a new unit with a single pipeline. So everything's automated, everything is, uh, all the codes are here, and this is pretty much the the pipelines are all here. So you can, as I mentioned, just copy and paste everything. I just wanted to show you the repository where we have the pipeline code. Go back here. My internet's playing a little bit. Hopefully it's not impacting the video and the presentation. 
Are, are you? Can you hear me okay? And still? Yes. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might be GitHub playing on on us. So yeah, there you go. Here you can see all the pipelines, all the code, and if you want to look at these requirements, look at these requ recommendations and principles, and translate that into a real world example. That's it. Just follow those steps. You can copy the pipelines, you can copy the scripts, and happy days, you will have a fully mission critical application deployed with everything that I showed you in a couple of minutes in less than an hour. All right, so let me go back to the PowerPoint for the final uh, considerations. But I will share the links as well in a second. I've got a PowerPoint here with all the links. But hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you will have a very good idea of how you deploy the, the whole thing from scratch. And some of the links that I wanted to show you is the first one is the mission critical documentation. So that's the, the documentation on the well architected framework uh, web page that I showed you. This is where we have everything. This is where this presentation came from. You can just um, access it by typing aka.ms forward slash mission dash critical. There is also a QR code here as well. And there is a the online reference implementation. So this is the one you can implement yourself. You can deploy the application yourself, all right, by simply following the guidelines. The step-by-step -step guide takes around, um, I took like 10 minutes to set everything up. And once you deploy, you run the pipeline, it takes around 50 minutes to deploy the whole thing. And this is also the QR code. And we, we have two examples. We have the Mission Critical Online with, with a single network topology and the connected, which breaks the network into a separate connectivity. And that's where you can use some shared resources as well. And last but not least, one single page with all the links, everything that there is about Mission Critical. All right, so in this page, we have a lot of videos that we have released on YouTube talking about mission critical concepts, all the design areas, all the testing, um, deployment, monitoring, it's all there, okay? There is a self-paced mission critical learning path. So you can actually learn all this stuff as a training, as a workshop. Uh, the workshop has the design of mission critical web application challenge, as well as the health model I was showing you. The continuously validate a mission critical application has been released a couple of weeks ago. So that's also part of that learning path, which is really cool. I showed you the implementation guide that you can follow on GitHub. And there are some customer case studies that we have shared, and there are more cases coming up as well. The links to the assessment, the mission critical assessment, which is pretty cool for you to compare with what you have today and what are the gaps based on the mission critical well architected framework. And some technical demonstration videos. There is an Azure Friday that went live uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. And I think this one went live last week, the health modeling for mission critical. Okay. And yeah, I guess. That is pretty much it. I just wanted to show you some actions that you can go and deploy the mission critical application by yourself. You can play with it, you can break it, you can destroy, and you can use it as a template, as a, a, a an example to show to your business, to uh, whoever you need to prove why mission critical and how you get there, okay? So that's it for me today. Um, we are a little bit over and I apologize for that, but I just wanted to, I will leave this page here because uh, right now you can use that page as a reference in Teams. You can actually click on the links. It will work um, if you click on those hyperlinks right now. But what I wanted to ask is questions, comments, feedback, anything that you wanted to get more details, anything that wasn't very clear. So we will open for Q&A now. But hopefully you have um enjoyed and 
learn a little bit of what Mission Critical is about, and most importantly, how you get there, how you make your solution Mission Critical ready, following some of our best practices. It was really an informative session, Leandro. I learned quite a lot from that. Yeah, thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Not a problem. Thanks, Nilish. All right. Uh, I guess we can. Thanks, Leandro. It's very yeah, very nice session. Thanks, Mohammed. Appreciate that. I was. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed. I had the pipeline ready to go. But I didn't deploy the solution. I had to delete the solution because I was trying everything yesterday and I was doing a lot of tests the last couple of weeks for other customers' demonstrations and I reached my Azure limit. So I had to delete my whole environment and I couldn't show you the website and what the website looks like, but I had the pipeline showing everything that was deployed. But yeah, I apologize for not having the full demo. It's just that I just realized this morning that I went above my Azure spend limit. <laughs> so hopefully um, I'll do that in a future presentation. Yeah, that'll be nice. It was quite a unique session. I think uh, we have learned a lot in terms of how uh, we decide in terms of uh, services and the approach, the health modeling. That's quite interesting. Yeah, thanks for that. And um, I guess that's quite um, something that customers were asking a lot before, and we didn't have a, we had a, the well-architected framework, but we didn't have one for mission critical. Like I need to make sure my application is not going to get impacted. What yep. would you do it? How do you Microsoft do it? And that's why we created this whole guidelines. And I love the fact that the CAD team Created this template, uh, the sample application, so you can deploy everything and see the 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 whole thing um, happening in front of you, which is fantastic. Yeah, and you mentioned in the, the point uh, when we do the deployment, and it's like the most critical uh, failover. So that's what uh, actually really happens in either in on-prem or you know uh, online solutions. So that's yeah. majorly we impact. Every time. Which is, yeah, which is the same. Um, I like the mentality of the zero. Um, oh, what's the name of the security approach? Zero trust. Where, zero trust thank you. <laughs> so the zero trust approach, where you trust no one, you expect things to get wrong, you expect to get uh, um, hacked, right? And it's the same thing here we should expect the application to break. We should expect failure. But with the deployment mentality and all the other guidelines, you are reducing that to the minimal. And that's what uh, most of our industry is doing right now, right? So we need to test everything as much as we can, the whole thing. It doesn't matter what you're changing. I want you to test everything, even if it's a tick box. I don't know, I want to, move from TLS 1.0 to TLS 1.2. It's just the storage accounts, but we are deploying the whole thing from scratch using the blue-green deployment with all the testing that, by the way, is part of the coding. You can copy the test as well. And once we finish that, you have the whole um, put over process by gradually using the application, see how the application behave, and that's how you reduce these kind of number one issues by um, almost nothing. No. Thanks, uh, Lee. Thanks. Thanks, Kenneth. Thanks, Jabir, for the feedback. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll hand it over to you, Mohamed and Lish. Uh, I wanted to thank you both again for letting me presenting in the um, Singapore Azure Group. And I hope to see you soon and uh, present in the near future again. Yeah, that's really nice, Leandro. I was just about to say that sometime in future, 
hopefully we should be able to host you in person whenever you happen to be in Singapore. That this has been a really good experience and I'm pretty sure looking at the feedback and the questions, people really enjoyed this session. So thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule and helping us with this. Uh, let's catch up sometime soon and hope to see you in person. Not a problem. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you everyone. And I'll see you around hopefully. And yeah, keep in you. touch on LinkedIn. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks for joining. See you soon next time. Bye bye.